Cult of the Cobra on Blu-ray from 1955. This thing was crazy. This is day 29 of 31 in my 31 days of horror reviews. This thing was 82 minutes long and is from the 50s, so a little bit newer than the stuff I've been seeing. And it was actually widescreen, uh, which was nice. And it, the film looked good. It was from a new 2K scan you can see here. Maybe new 2k scan and there was only a couple audio pops so for the most part it looked and sounded great not as good as the last one not as good as the black pass castle but it still looked really good and this is like a uh, femme fatale to the max so i was excited to see this this movie <laughs> because of the picture and the premise i was just like it looks like it's gonna be a good time now unlike the black castle this movie was absolutely a horror movie through and through and it was it had a pretty awesome premise look at this <laughs> look at this quote the time is 1945 the place is asia it's like oh i've heard of asia it actually really narrows it down so there's going to be spoilers in here so this group of friends pretty much finishing up world war ii it's 1945 and they've been there for four years in the asia you know, the place. Uh, and they meet this guy, and he's a part of this cult that believes that snakes and humans can, a snake can turn into a human, and a human can turn into a snake. And it's like, ooh, that's interesting and scary. And here they are, and look at what they're doing later. So the snake charmer guy offers to <laughs> let them join him <laughs> in a cult meeting. And I can say, and I'm not going to say how I can say, but I'm going to say that the fact that a bunch of service members are doing this at night in another country is 100% absolutely realistic. I had zero qualms about this. I was like, you, you want to be like, no, those six servicemen, they would not do that. They would be respectful of the other culture. <laughs> It's like, no, they would totally sneak in to a, to a snake, charming people turning into a snake cult. I don't know how I know that, though. So this is one of the things that they see at the, the little cult cobra party. <laughs> Hand puppet show. Oh, there's two cobras. Oh, there's a big one. Of course, this guy immediately... They've told him over and over and over... No cameras. What does he do? Sneaks this thing out. With the flash, mind you. What a goober. There he goes. <laughs> He's gonna take a picture. <laughs> it just causes the entire place to erupt in violence and chaos. <laughs> and he runs and grabs the snake bucket. Like, what an idiot. And of course, the... It ends with them setting the place on fire. So the cult leader put a curse on these six guys that they would all get killed off one by one. And, uh, spoiler alert, that's gonna pretty much happen. Look at this, look at this snake cam. It's gonna get him. <laughs> So they go back home and this mysterious lady moves in next to one of the guys and uh, she has a secret. Check out, check out her eyes. They just set a date to go have a, a day on the town in New York City. And then he walks out. Look at her eyes. <laughs> I think she might not be what she seems. So one of the guys is totally smitten with her and so... Uh, she doesn't kill him, but she sneaks out at night and just starts offing all of his friends. So she's like, they're like having a relationship where he's trying to really hard while she secretly killing his friends. And so it's like this interesting, like love story, like a girl next door kind of thing. But then there's all these like horrible murders that are happening. And this guy Rico has been closing up his bowling alley. And, uh, 
getting ready to go and there's been all these creepy camera angles and we know that she's there and we know she's sneaking around and acting like a snake. And uh, I have to address this because all these 30s and 40s movies I've been watching in these in these big cars, they always get in on the passenger side and then they slide over to the driver's side. And I just thought that was maybe like isolated, like just some of them do it. But apparently that's the way everybody did it according to the movies i don't know in real life if in all these like 40s and 50s cars people just get in on the on the sidewalk side and slide over it's like i guess that's a lot nicer than having to walk in the road but it kind of killed the tension a little bit because i'm like oh my gosh it's like every single movie they get in on that side and slide over so anyway tangent so we know the snake somewhere she's maybe in the car or whatever but this part was awesome. Uh oh, see something in his rearview mirror? This is the shadow of the snake. Ah! <laughs> this crap. That was an actual car crash, and I love the miniatures. I love them destroying miniatures. But, I mean, that was a great crash. Like, it veered off the road, like, there was a person that had to dodge it, and then it kind of went up a ramp and flipped over. Like, I really like that. I'd say, uh, you know, like a good 9 out of 10. The only thing that would make it better would be if a little bit of flame shot out from anywhere. Or some, maybe some glass broke all over the place. There's some broken glass on the ground. But anyway, that was a great crash of a real car. But um, I actually didn't show it. But you see this, like, snake shadow coming towards him in the back of the car. And then the camera goes in, like, snake cam and just, like, zooms into his neck. Uh, that's so awesome. Here you go snake -o vision again. <laughs> He's got the shadow on him. Oh no! <laughs> it's awful. So many awful deaths in this thing. So she's actually a really awesome villain because she actually ends up being really conflicted about like her her mission that she has, like her cultish murder mission of all these guys. Um, and and she even tells them such. She's like, I can't uh, I can't sorry, go through with this. Too. And she confesses her love to him. And he's like, have you ever loved someone? And she's like, no. So know what she says here. I didn't come to any conclusions. I I'm so confused. The feeling I have is so strange to me. So, like I said, she's a really compelling villain because she's so conflicted. Like, she actually does love him and she finally does admit it. She's been, like, holding back the whole movie. But she finally admits it. Um... But she's all confused and scared by it, but she's still going about, like, these murders. So you, like, feel bad for her, but she is slowly murdering all these, like, young, attractive, nice-haired veterans. So it's like you hate her, but at the same time she's, like, feeling all these feelings. So anyway, compelling bad guy because you can at least feel something for her. Yeah. Kathleen Hughes. Don't forget you're all supposed to meet my dressing room before the show. Try and make it about a so, quarter of eight. Sure we won't make it up. Look at her. Look at her just dominating the screen with her presence. So she's the one that I was basically laughing at from It Came From Outer Space because of the ridiculous role she had in that movie. Like, her boyfriend was, like, missing, and she's just, like, flirting with the other people. So, and she's only in that movie for, like, one minute. And I made the joke that, like, maybe she was just hamming it up so she could get more parts. Boop. Maybe it worked. <laughs> Maybe it worked, because here she is. She's got a bigger part. I know nothing about her. I'm just saying, here she is again. I was like, she looks familiar the whole time. Uh, very uh, Marilyn Monroe clone-ish. Anyway, she did really great in this movie, in her limited part, where she's kind of torn between the two guys, and then she picks this guy. No, 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 no. She doesn't pick this guy. She picks the other guy. And she wants them all to go to her show. I was supposed to meet my dressing room before the show. Listen to this. Try and make it about a quarter of eight. Sure we won't make it nervous. I'm counting on you all to be so gay, I won't have time to be nervous. <laughs> I, sorry, I know that's not what they mean, but I just can't help. I just can't help it in these old movies when they say that. Because you just, it's not how they mean it, but I always just twist it to mean that. And how the situation would be different is good. It gives me a chuckle. So this guy has basically been denying that this lady has anything to do with it the whole time because he finally found a love. Well, he, he had that other lady, but she totally picked the other guy. Anyway, so this is him finding out that, like, it's totally her. There's literally a dead body in her apartment of their another one of their friends. 
And so he finally is like, okay. And so the the main, the blonde's boyfriend, or I guess husband or fiance, is like getting the cops. They're racing there. It's like race against time because the snake's out on a murderous rampage. She starts screaming in her dressing room. And then this guy shows up. And here it is on the ground. <laughs> Get him acting acting quickly. Tom, be careful. Yeah. Anyway, he ends up tossing it out the window. Yeah. Snake splat. <laughs> nice. There's the whole budget of the movie. Okay. So I just, I find myself just wishing the worst on all these beautiful young people in these movies. And so when they're all getting killed off one by one, it's just like, oh, this is so sad. And then you're just like, yes. Uh, but, and then also same with like the young couples. It's like, oh, I hope they get together. And then I'm like, I hope they die. Or I hope one of them dies and they're sad. You know, but, but ultimately, like when they get together, I'm like actually happy because that's what I wanted to happen. And this movie actually ends with a total heartbreak. Oh, look at that. He's so sad. So the one couple gets together, and this guy goes through four years of war, finally finds a girl he's interested in, and then he sadly turns around from her body and just walks off, and the movie ends. So it's like, okay, one young couple got together, but this guy just slowly walks off into the street, and it ends there, and I loved it. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of, like, a partially sad ending at least because it's usually just like some some people die and then the young couple gets together and the monster dies and something burns down so it's kind of nice to see like it not be totally perfect at the end so poor poor this guy so this has been day 29 of 31 in my 31 days of horror so thanks for sticking with me and uh, let me know what you think of this one i really liked it i thought it was a great scary halloween movie so uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Push the thumb up or thumb down button and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.